of food adulteration and contamination. Rising cases of foodborne illnesses. Add to that the declining customer confidence and you have the perfect recipe for disaster. Today, adulteration is in our product. Uh, vegetables, fruits, Spices. Despite our efforts, I am not 100% sure that what I am eating is completely unadulterated. Most of our illnesses are because of unsafe means of keeping food, storing food or buying food which is not healthy. In a country like ours where more than 300 disease outbreaks in 2014 were due to contamination of food. Food safety should be given utmost importance. But instead, we have cases of mounting food safety issues. What is the key issue in India? In my opinion, it has to all to do with lack of environmental hygiene and uh, insufficient hygiene practices also uh, those ha from those who are handling food and those who are preparing the food. The problem of food safety essentially boils down to issues typically of residues uh, which are contaminants that enter during a food process like for instance uh, pesticides uh, that are used during growing food but which still continue in the food even after it's reached the consumer so that's one kind of issue and the other is contaminants which are things that are outside uh, the food chain, which enter the food chain. Uh, these can be heavy metals and so forth and therefore they are uh, they're also part of the food. Food safety can be compromised at any stage of the food value chain. From production at the farm level to processing at the factory level. And finally, at the stage of consumption. The issue of food safety starts all the way from the farm, if it's uh, you know if it's vegetables or fruits, and all the way into processing and in right up to the time when uh, it reaches uh, you know someone's table. So it's an end-to-end -end, uh, quality process, and a breakdown at any point in the chain, whether uh, you know it's at a cold chain for where the food needs to be kept, or uh, if it's based on uh, you know contaminants entering the food chain. Uh, or if there is improper handling of food, for instance. These are all areas in which uh, you know, food safety can be compromised. The issue of contamination is not the only threat to food safety. Even more dangerous is adulteration, unfortunately a common phenomenon in India. Milk is one of the most common adulterated food items. In a survey conducted by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India in 2011, around 70% samples of milk collected across the country were found to be either contaminated or adulterated. So adulteration of food is a serious issue. It's particularly a serious issue in India with respect to milk, for instance, where it's either watered down milk or, uh, you know, things that are actually added to milk to make it look as if it has uh, the fat content that it's supposed to have. Uh, so adulteration is basically adding in something to a commodity to make it appear to be better and it usually is, uh, uh, the word implies that this is intentional, it was not an accidental contamination, it was a purposeful contamination with, with that particular end goal in mind. Food manufacturers across the globe can tackle the problem of adulteration. Danone, a leading player in the dairy industry, 
follow stringent practices during procurement and packaging to ensure that consumers receive safe to eat food. The first of all food safety areas of milk is very obviously the procurement. How do you get the milk? How do you get control over the farmer? How do you make sure the farmer is treating the cow right? How do you see that the, the milk is transported very fast, cold into the next chilling center? Um, we at Danone in the north of India work together with our friends of nutrition and they have the highest world standards in milk collection that you can have and in the, north, and in the southwest with Shriver Dynamics. Large-scale manufacturers like Dabur work at the grassroots level to ensure that the quality of food produced at the farm level is not substandard. We are working with honeybee farmers in Bihar and UP to actually encourage safe practices, good practices, so that ultimately my consumer gets high quality, unadulterated, 100% honey. Similarly, in fruits, we are working extensively in South as well as Maharashtra to promote good quality farming, so that's the start. Second bit is that we can do more in terms of the, the condition in which the food is retailed, it is, uh, it is stocked and how it reaches the consumer. With the rapidly growing convenience food sector, even retail establishments play a vital role in ensuring that safe to eat food reaches the hands of consumers. One such retail giant, Reliance Fresh, follows certain best practices to avoid any instances of food safety violations. The customer uh, places an intrinsic trust on me. I have to be her agent on food safety, on making sure that she's uh, getting the right things. Uh, we have to rise up and live up to uh, those standards. So while the brands that we sell are, carry their reputation and their own checks, there is a whole series of standard operating processes as well as uh, vigilance that we maintain uh, internally in products that we sell and the manner in which you sell, the temperature control, the, the uh, uh, freshness maintenance on the, on the shop floor. So it's a, it's a big task, but it's what our customers expect us to do. While there are policy frameworks that govern food safety in India, it is essential that these are followed and implemented in the right manner. Now, adulteration of food has been banned for a very long time. We used to have a Prevention of Food Adulteration Act a long time ago. Uh, and all of that has been folded into the Food Safety uh, uh, and Standards Act of 2006. Uh, but uh, uh, adulteration continues to be an issue because uh, we have what we would call a policy-rich but an implementation-poor environment. The government of India has three key uh, food-based social safety nets. The first is the targeted public distribution system. You have the midday meal scheme, and then you have also the, the integrated child development services. All of them, they have their uh, food safety standards and protocols in place. But in spite of that, there are incidents. And I think uh, you may recall, for instance, what happened in Bihar in uh, 2013, when uh, people who prepared the food of the school had stored the cooking oil somewhere close to a dangerous uh, insecticide. Somehow things got mixed up. And as a result, sadly enough, more than 20 children died. So you have the protocols, but it's not always um, how would they say, it's not always observed. So it's really important that uh, the highest standards are observed in those safety nets. So how do we as consumers ensure that the food we eat is safe and nutritious? Here are a few tips one can follow to safeguard the health of their family. So everyone is a consumer, right? So I think the very important one, number one, is keep it clean. So keep your hands clean, keep the surfaces, the tools that you use for cooking, everything should be, should be clean. And then another one is you should separate what you cooked already 
from what is still raw, especially when it's meat products, but also dirty vegetables and so on. There can easily be a contamination again. Uh, thirdly, when you cook, you should make sure that you cook the food thoroughly. Uh, food, actually, you, you need to have at least 70 degrees Celsius for at least five minutes before uh, pathogens are killed. And in order to have that, I think you should cook your food for 30 minutes so that even inside you have been killing everything. It's a broad spectrum. Like if I'm traveling and I want to eat uh, on a wayside dhaba. So I should first look at it whether the basic hygiene and cleanliness is being maintained or not. If I take it from a street vendor, I should prefer to take it from one who is observing the basic hygiene cleanliness factors. If I go and buy it in the form of packaged food, I need to develop the habit of looking at the label, what all ingredients are there and whether it is good for me to be taken or not. On the other side of the break, we take a look at a company that's been at the forefront of keeping food safe, using an innovative technology that they developed back in the 1950s. Stay tuned. Packaging food as an industry practice has been around for a century, but the challenge always was how to package liquids. In the early 1940s, Swedish entrepreneur Dr. Ruben Rousing had a burning ambition to find a practical, cost-effective alternative for packaging and distributing perishable foods, especially milk. One of Rousing's trusted colleagues, Eric Wallenberg, hit on the idea by applying the tetrahedron shape to a package. Consequently, what Rousing then discovered was a continuous filling method that would become the trademark of Tetra Pak. His drive led him to pioneer one of the greatest inventions in food technology, the aseptic packaging technology. Ruben Rousing could not possibly have imagined what would happen with the Tetra Pak packaging portfolio after he invented the Tetra Classic. Due to consumer and food producer demands for increasing functionality and differentiation, the portfolio has broadened in many different directions. So if we look at the evolution, one of the first major milestones after Tetra Classic was the Tetra Brick package. And when you combine this with the septic technologies, to get Tetra Brick aseptic, this still today represents absolutely one of the cheapest and most cost-effective ways to distribute and protect food. Established in 1951, Tetra Pak has grown to become the world's leading food processing and packaging solutions company. As a brand, Tetra Pak believes in maintaining the highest quality of product development in order to ensure the distribution. We work across the value chain, be it food and beverage companies or retailers and even consumers to ensure that our technology can, can process and package these products and bring them across to the consumers without the need for refrigeration, which is a very significant advantage, not only from a cost perspective, but also from an environmental perspective. Man and machine work in tandem to ensure the highest quality of packaging. The aseptic packaging developed by Tetra Pak has allowed for food to be stored for longer periods of time and distributed all across the globe. When we design a process, we do man-machine diagram that uh, when there are five people working on printer, what exactly each individual will do at what stage of the process. So there is very clear definition around who is supposed to do what with clear identified roles and responsibility for the individuals. There are six layers to the aseptic packaging material and each layer is created for a special purpose. The six protective layer sheets get fused into one gigantic roll for the packaging. The carton consists of six layers which acts like a fortress for the product packed inside. Layer 1 is made of polyethylene or plastic which guards against moisture. Layer 2 consists of paperboard which gives it strength and stability. Layer 3 is again polyethylene which acts as an adhesive for the next layer. 
The fourth layer is aluminium which prevents the entry of light, air and odor. Layer 5 and 6 are the two innermost layers. And layer 6 is the food grade polyethylene layer that seals in the flavor of the liquid. The brand owner that fills the product in our packaging, for them the fact that it's an aseptic processing and packaging technology does not require refrigerated warehousing or refrigerated transportation that allows them to transport products in our packages to the retail you know, without the need for refrigeration, which is a very powerful benefit. Then we get to the consumer and of course because you're providing uh, a, a, a septic technology in, with, the, with the processing of the product in a six layer packaging, you give the consumer that option that allows that product to remain intact for a period of three to six months and therefore you know, a certain level of convenience you know, across, across the board. So I think it is a holistic experience overall. Protex What's Good aptly defines Tetra Pak's role in ensuring that milk and beverages retain their nutrition value till they reach the consumer's table. Their clients have benefited immeasurably from the aseptive packaging technology. It is with the Tetra Pak USD cartel, it is not only you are going to the Indian markets where you could not reach with the pasteurized milk, it is offshore also outside Indian market also. Go to Hong Kong or you go to Dubai market or go to Doha market. We could reach to this market because of Tetra Pak USD. Otherwise, there was no other way to sell milk in this distance market. And you see, all these countries are milk deficit countries. So, sky is the limit for Tetra Pak. The Tetra Pak technology also plays a vital role in ensuring that the packaged milk contains all the nutrients necessary for a healthy lifestyle. Milk is ultra high temperature or UHT treated in a closed system thereby avoiding human contact. It is then flash heated between 135 to 140 degrees Celsius for 3 to 4 seconds and then cooled down to 20 degrees Celsius. This flash heating kills the harmful bacteria while keeping the nutrients safe. Without the need of any preservatives, UHT treatment along with aseptic packaging makes for an exceptional combination. You do not need to boil these, uh, the milk or you do not need to add preservatives, nothing is added to it and it still maintains a long shelf life you know, in, in, and thereby gives you that convenience that most people are starting to look for you know, today. Tetra Pak is used widely by all classes and income groups. Their unique packaging style ensures that liquid products of the highest quality are available not only at the largest supermarkets but also at the local Kirana stores. There's been a lot of emphasis in terms of developing and launching new packages in the market. This has been customized even further for the Indian market by making it in the form of a chain pack which can be easily hung at the small corner shops in different parts of the country. India has a large population of lower socio-economic classes. And to meet those consumers, we have the Tetra Classic Aseptic, which is commonly known as the Samosa Pack, and the Tetra Fino Aseptic, which is also known as the Pouch Pack, to meet this segment of consumers. The company has also been at the forefront of campaigning for food safety and has been carrying out several awareness drives and initiatives over the years. One such was Word of Mom, where young mothers were invited to learn about the benefits of consuming UHT milk and participate in a blog contest to dispel the myths of consuming UHT milk. Tetra Pak also held the Teachers Knowledge Meet where it reached out to a captive audience of 1500 teachers across Delhi, Mumbai and Bangalore to highlight the importance of health and nutrition in 2011 and 12. Over the past years we have been undertaking a number of key initiatives across the country that aims to build awareness amongst food scientists, nutritionists, doctors and even consumers. We started in 2012 by running a series of workshops across the key cities in the country where we talked about the importance of food safety, the importance of nutrition in daily diet. 
with a mission to take the cause of food safety to a larger audience, Tetra Pak recently launched a pan India campaign in the form of the Right to Keep Food Safe initiative. Spread across 10 cities, this one of a kind initiative saw mothers and nutritionists come together to discuss the importance of safe and healthy food. Even as nutritionists, there are a lot of information which we are lacking in. So first we educated ourselves and now this year we felt that we need to go to the next level and reach out to the community. And I think what better but the mother who is obviously at home and who is the, the lady of the house, the boss in the kitchen. Mothers are the soul of the family which thinks about the health of the family. And if they could bring some changes among the mothers and use mothers to spread the awareness, I think nothing else can be better than this. This can be the start of a revolution. Celebrity moms across the country joined hands with Tetra Pak to share their personal experiences around food safety and encourage mothers to become guardians of safe food. So I'm really proud actually to be a part of uh, Tetra Pak and Times of India's Right to Keep Food Safe campaign. Um, you know, it's a wonderful initiative. It's all about creating an awareness that every consumer out there has the right to have food that's safe. The right to keep food safe is a very vital campaign because as we're getting closer and closer to uh, using more and more processed food, it's important to understand what exactly uh, makes food safe. What is its shelf life, how, how to best use it, what is the delivery chain. So I think an informed customer is, uh, is, uh, is what we're looking at. Catch Right to Keep Food Safe next week as we travel to 10 cities to get a glimpse of what this initiative has to offer.